Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to my programming channel and today we're going to discuss the threat we might face as a blockchain community guys in the future when quantum computers become more popular and more developed and more widely used compared to today's quantum computers. So let's talk about it. Why are quantum computers a threat to us as a Bitcoin community or as a an Ethereum community? Guys, that is because uh, both of these technologies are based on cryptography. That is why they're called cryptocurrencies, because they are based on cryptography, guys. And there are two different types of cryptography. There is symmetric crypto cryptography and asymmetric cryptography. And, uh, for example, in Bitcoin, we use both symmetric cryptography, which is the hashing. When we do hashing, it's called symmetric cryptography. And also we use asymmetric cryptography, cryptography, and that is when we have a public and private key architecture, which we have in Bitcoin, because when you send your Bitcoins to someone, when you initiate a transaction, then you use your private key and your public key is also used to verify your identity. So we have both symmetric cryptography and asymmetric cryptography in the blockchain world. So what are the threats that come from quantum computers and why are quantum computers a threat, guys? Well, one reason is because quantum computers will be very, very efficient at uh, uh, producing factors to prime numbers. And you might ask, guys, you might ask, Ivan, what have prime factors to do with uh, cryptography? And uh, the whole uh, asymmetric cryptography, the whole private public key infrastructure is actually based on prime numbers and, and uh, prime factors. And so if you, and the whole uh, reason why it is secure today is because with current normal computers, it would be, <coughs> practically impossible to find the correct factor of a huge prime number and to break the encryption. That is how you would do it today. If you want to crack today's, uh, for example, if you want to hack an SSL encryption or a TLS encryption on the web, you would need to find a prime factor to, to a gigantic uh, <laughs> prime number. And that is with today's technology, practically impossible. However, it will be very, very possible with quantum computers because with quantum computers, we could use an algorithm that is called Shor's algorithm. And so with Shor's algorithm, the number of steps required to break a private public key uh, encryption uh, it, so number of steps decrease dramatically, namely they decrease from 2 to the power of 188 guys, which would take with um, so many st steps we would need with the normal computers, 2 to the power of 128. And so this number goes down to 128, so 128 uh, to the power of 3, which is significant significantly lower guys and so the whole private and public key asymmetric cryptography is in uh, deep trouble if uh, quantum computers become so developed that they are able to run shores algorithm in an efficient way and uh, we well the scientific community and the cryptography standards organization, which is called eCrypt uh, Standards, they 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 say that Bitcoin cryptography will be safe until 2030 or 2040. So we have, uh, yeah, we have 20, 15 to 20 years uh, in order to find a solution. And the Bitcoin protocol itself is. Uh, built with the quantum threat in mind. So the Bitcoin protocol itself can be extended and we can build on top of the current protocol and improve it in such a way uh, so that we are protected against the quantum threat that may come in the future. So 
now we talked about asymmetric uh, cryptography with private and public key and so it is vulnerable guys because quantum computers will be very efficient at uh, finding prime factors to a prime number and the whole private and public key uh, architecture is based on uh, prime uh, prime factors and prime numbers so that is why asymmetric cryptography is vulnerable so now let's talk about uh, symmetric cryptography meaning the hashes will hashes be as vulnerable as public and private keys and the answer is uh, no they are a bit safer however there is an algorithm a quantum algorithm that would make this easier as well and this algorithm is called Grover's algorithm and so this algorithm would take 2 to the power of 256 steps with today's computers and now it, I'm talking about SHA-256 hash so if you would break this algorithm today you would require 2 to the power of 256 guys basic operations and that is just mind-blowing this number is so, so gi gi ginormous so it's it's practically impossible however with Grover's algorithm it would take 2 to the power of 128 number of uh, basic operations and it's still mind-blowing and it would be practically impossible even when quantum computers become more developed so in that sense guys symmetric cryptography is more secure and less vulnerable compared to asymmetric cryptography however guys however because both of those are used in for example bitcoin this makes the bitcoin uh, technology bitcoin network and blockchain vulnerable to quantum threats so what can we do how can we solve this so one uh, well one solution and as i mentioned before is to expand the bitcoin protocol and to make it more resistant to quantum uh, uh, quantum threats and that is possible because bitcoin protocol was, was built with that threat in mind and so it is extendable so that is one solution the second solution if if we have um, if we find ourselves in a ourselves in a situation where the quantum computers are developed and we haven't really found an answer and have extended the bitcoin protocol and bitcoin architecture uh, what we could do is to use each bitcoin address only once that way guys that way it would be really really hard for quantum computers to break your public private key encryption in such a small uh, amount of time because if you only use a bitcoin address once the attacker would need to crack your encryption before it gets processed by by a miner before it gets uh, placed in a block and so that would be really hard even when quantum computers get uh, developed and so if you use uh, each address only once for one transaction, uh, it will be very, very safe, even with quantum computers. However, if you use your Bitcoin address multiple times for multiple transactions, then the attacker would have... Uh, uh, would pick up your uh, encryption the first time you send it but it, he will not be able to crack it and to to crack this transaction on the first time however the second time you send something then the attacker will have the possibility to break your encryption because the attacker has already seen you send a transaction before and so that way in the, so in that way the attacker has had time to break your encryption and so the next time you send then the attacker can use uh, uh, can use your broken encryption to uh, to mess with the system to mess with your transaction so that's it guys we discussed the quantum threat and we discussed uh, uh, how it will affect asymmetric and symmetric 
cryptography. Guys, what do you think? Do you do you think that uh, the quantum threat is serious? And do you think that Bitcoin and Ethereum will suffer from the quantum threat? Or will we be able to come up with new blockchains or extend the current blockchains in such a way that we are safe? What do you think? Leave your, your comments in the comment section below, guys. And if you are a new viewer, guys, you should definitely subscribe if you like technology, you like blockchain, you like uh, development and programming, because I myself am a software developer and you will find this channel interesting, guys. So that's it for today. We talked about the quantum computers and the threat they, made, they might bring to us as a blockchain community. And I post videos every single day, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.